This is part one in the Craftsman Emerson Gen 2 Rebuild series. If you haven't seen the Emerson comparison video, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be disassembling the Emerson Gen 2. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to start this disassembly by removing the feed stop collar. Next, we'll remove the belt cover and the pivot shaft. It's supposed to have a wing nut on it, but this one doesn't. Then we'll remove the tension rod and the tension clamp. This is how you adjust the belt tension. And it has a little rubber cap on the end of it that is deteriorated. Next we'll just rotate the motor to remove the belt. We'll unplug the motor on this side. We'll remove the motor mount hinge pin and when we pull up on it the motor and the motor mount will come off. Next we're going to use a 9 16 wrench and remove that screw that holds in the hinge assembly. And there's a rubber washer on the top of it. And then you can't really see it but I'm going to pull the chuck key out of the table and then we're going to loosen the table and lower it so that we have room for the quill so on the gen 2's just like the gen 1's all we've got to do is pull the hub towards the camera and the entire quill assembly should come right out and then I'm going to let the tension out on the spring Go ahead and remove the quill lock. And then I'm going to reach up inside and disengage the spring off of that roll pin. Again, if you haven't seen the comparison video, you really don't know what I'm talking about. But there's a roll pin on the inside that the spring is captured on. And you can just reach in there with your finger and pop it off of there. And out came the hub. And then we're going to use PB Blaster on everything that is connected to the column. So the head casting, the table, and then the base. And we're going to just loosen and rotate the table out of the way so that we can lift the head casting off. So we're going to loosen the lock and lift up on the head casting and unfortunately the bottom bore gets kind of stuck here so there's a sweet spot that if I get it perfectly level it'll just lift right off of there but as you can see I've got it kind of kicked up and then down up and then down and I'm fighting with it and it's only being held on by like a quarter of an inch of the of the column right now. But if you just play with it enough, you'll get it off of there. Now, if this column was polished, this would have come straight up off of there. But because of all the rust and grime on this column, there we go. And then we'll just lift the table straight up and off the column and then we're going to remove the column collar all the Emerson Gen 2, 3, 4's and 5's ha came with these and they're actually supposed to go under the head but I like putting them under the table and it's a half inch wrench that I'm using here and it'll just lift up 
and then a half inch wrench again to remove the lock screw for the column in the base. And then we run into problem number one. That is a seized column in the base. So how do I solve this? We're going to use something that's about the same height as the column when I've got it laid like this. And we'll spay, spray some PB Blaster around that column rusted area. Right there. And we'll even shoot some inside the hole where we removed the screw. Because there's a shoe in there that's cast iron and it rusts usually. So I'm just using a piece of bar steel here and a little bit bigger hammer. And I'm just tapping on the column. Do not tap on the cast iron base, otherwise you'll crack it. But tap it on the column. And I'm just working my way around it. And then I'm going to check the other side to see if we're actually doing anything here. Are we moving it at all? And yeah, we're, it's moved about a quarter of an inch. So we're good. So we're going to continue to do this. And then once the column has passed this first bore, we've got to be careful that we're not going to chip off the edge on the second bore. So we've got to make sure that we're still only hitting the column edge and not the bore edge inside that. So I'm going to move the uh, bin down a little bit more just in case the column comes flying out of there. I don't want it to go flying all over the place. And I've got my leg just on the other side of the base so that the base won't fall that direction. And I can catch it if it falls towards the camera. But we obviously don't want it to slam on the concrete floor, otherwise it might crack. So here I'm just making sure that I'm only going to hit the column. And we're almost there. I think we're golden. So we'll stand it up and lift it out. There we go. Problem solved. Next, we'll just pop out that lock shoe and then pull the base off the floor. Okay, so we've got the table lock we're removing now. And you've got the lock, the sleeve, and the handle. And then we'll pull out the headlock and compare them because I've never worked on a Gen 2 before. And they are almost identical. Really, the only thing I see different is the angle on the lock handle is just slightly different, which it may be bent for all I know. So put those in the bin. Go ahead and take apart the column collar. So if you haven't watched my other videos, this is the stuff that's going to get soaked in simple green and then de-rusted. And that bin over there is for stuff that's not going in the simple green. So this is the uh, hinge and it's got a C-clip on the end of it. 
So we just pop that C clip off of there. We'll disassemble the quill lock. And we need a 332nd Allen for the set screw in there. A lot of grime inside that set screw. And there we go. And then we'll separate the handle and the screw. And we'll go ahead and disassemble the feed stop collar. There's the lock, the fine adjustment. There's a spring in there and the collar. And then there's the uh, clamp for the tension adjustment. The shoe. All right, so now we're at the hub pinion spring assembly. We're just going to pull the feed handle rods off. And then we've got a pin in there that we need to get out. And one side of that pin is splined, so I'm looking to see which end is splined. We want the splined end facing down when we remove it. And we've got the fiber washer that was on the pinion. So we're using a quarter inch punch. And we'll just knock it out of there. There it goes. And we'll just twist the hub off of the pinion. And then pull the spring out. And this is a double loop. And then we'll go over to my Colombian Autocrat 415 vise. It's a, kind of a rare vise. And spin those knobs off of the rods. Yeah, I went through a phase where I collected vices. And if you ever wondered why I don't do volume or voice while I'm filming, it's because I'm usually listening to an audiobook like I am right now. And that is Lead the Way from the Forgotten Ruins series, book six. Awesome series. Anyways... I digress, we get the knobs off the rods. And there's no further disassembly with that hinge assembly, so. Next, we've got the quill. We gotta get the chuck off of the spindle. So we're going to put that Allen wrench inside the chuck line up the flats with the jaws and then tighten it down with the chuck key but the chuck key that came with this drill press is the wrong chuck key so with a proper chuck key we tighten it down then we're just going to put that allen wrench inside the vise And we're going to use a spanner wrench to loosen the lock collar on the chuck. And then spin it again. And the spindle should come out of the chuck. Like that. Then we'll remove the chuck from the Allen wrench. Allen wrench from the vise. And back over to the table. So, 9 16 
which that is not. That is to remove the nut on the bottom of the feed stop rod. The very rusted feed stop rod. And then 7 sixteenths to remove the nut and lock washer from the screw that holds the feed stop bracket together, like so. And that is basically the same design as the 100s and 150s, except there's a spacer inside this feed stop bracket. I guess that's meant to give it a specific offset. And then here we are with the quill. And unlike the 150s, there's no thrust collar. The bearing is being held in place by a lock ring. And yes, I upgraded my crappy snap ring pliers for a quality set of laying adjustables. And this is the first time I've used them, so I'm trying to figure out how that lock works. But once I get it, come on. There we go. All right, so. Was the set worth 120 bucks? Worth every freaking penny. I love this set. All right, so then we're just going to pop the spindle down through that bearing. And I'm going to replace these bearings, so I don't care about that bearing. So I'm just going to pop it out of there with the spindle. Yep. And then we've got the bearing on this end of the spindle, which has another uh, snap ring on it. So I'm having trouble seeing the holes, but as soon as I get the pliers in there, Boom. Come on. There it is. Again, worth every penny I paid for that set. All right, get that bearing off of there. There it is. And that's the spindle. And then we've got the quill gasket. There's a washer on this quill, which is a change from the 150 or Gen 1s. And then we've got the retaining ring or snap ring. So if you haven't seen any of my other disassemblies, I put the quill in a vise and I use vise grips, one on each side of the opening for this retaining ring. And this one gave me a little bit more trouble than usual. Uh, I just grabbed a little bit further up on the vice grips. There we go. And there it is. All 
All right, so here's the head casting. And there is a machine screw that holds the bearing assembly for the spindle pulley assembly inside the head casting, just like on a 150 and a 100, except there's only one machine screw. There's not one on both sides. So they, I guess they omitted the other side. But we'll just spin that out. And then we're going to use a wooden dowel to, well, it started to come out. So it's already past the first bore. There's two bores in there, one for each bearing. And I line it up and I tap on it, but it doesn't stay aligned. So it gets stuck. So I can align it better when it's straight up and down. But as soon as I go to align it, it comes right out. And there you go. Huh. Okay. No dowel needed. So we got four screws that hold on this guard plate. And each one of those screws has a lock washer under it. And they're in there pretty good, so that's why I'm using that stubby number three. They probably haven't been removed since this drill press was assembled. And the dude that installed them was probably pretty jacked because they are in there really tight. And there's the plate. And it's bent a little. Those end tabs are bent. So off camera, I take it over to the vise and bend them back in shape. And then we're back on the head. So we got this front trim plate. It's just got two screws that hold it in place. And on it is a printed setup guide on how to raise and lower the table, adjust the feed stop collar, so on and so forth. Kind of like a quick start guide. I guess they really didn't know what to put on the front there. By the time they get to Gen 3, they start putting significant data plates on these, like tap drill size and drill speeds for various materials. So now we're just removing the screws that hold the uh, switch plate assembly. And this is what holds the uh, light bulb on the underside. This is the first Craftsman drill press to have uh, an electrical assembly like this built into it. And it's just four screws. And this electrical setup is a very simple setup. It's not complicated at all. Just making sure there's nothing else in there I need to pull out. That's pretty much the head stripped down. It's 
So, pro tip, if you want to be able to put everything back together like it's supposed to go, you take pictures. Just so we don't run into a problem. All right, so disassembling this sucker, we just pull off the wire caps or wire nuts, whatever you call them. And separate all the wiring. Now there are metal side clips for that receptacle and the switch. And on the receptacle, I can press them in with a screwdriver and then push the receptacle through the plate. When you do this, you want to be careful not to strip any of those wires as you pull it out on the edges of the plate. But the clips are a little bit different on the switch, so some pliers. Clamp them down and then press it through like so. And the light socket is just held on with a screw. And then there is a plastic wire relief that I have to squeeze closed to pull the wiring through the plate. And I'm looking at the wiring now because I'm trying to decide if I'm going to replace this power cable or if I'm just going to reuse it because it's in good condition. There's no breaks in it or anything and yeah so I think we're just going to clean that up all right so now we got the uh, belt cover and the uh, end cap is held on by four screws the cool thing about this end cap is it's kind of a smoked uh, plexiglass that you can see through can't tell because it's so dirty right now but It's uh, got a piece of plexiglass in there that's got some printed data on it, like uh, speeds for drilling, but you can see right through it. I guess it's so you can actually look and see what sheave on the pulley your belt is on. So you know whether you need to adjust it or not. And if you think about, you know, the Gen 1s, which were 150s, you know, there there really isn't a, uh, a cover over the belt. So you can just look at the pulley and see it. But, uh, you know, by the time you get to Gen 3, the covers are solid and you can't see through them. You have to lift it up to see what sheave you're on. But kind of cool. And there's some bent areas on that uh, belt cover I'm going to have to bend back in place. And then we have the spindle cap, which is held on by three screws. And if you think about it, the spindle has a longer throw, so it's a longer spindle. And it sticks up higher than the pulley for the uh, spindle pulley assembly, whereas like on a Oh, a Gen 1, the spindle comes to the top of that pulley. But on the Gen 2, you have a 6-inch spindle travel, 
So uh, all the Gen 1s and the Gen 3s, 4s, and 5s all had just a 4-inch spindle travel. So you've got that longer spindle. So that's the belt cover. And so I think the last thing we're going to disassemble for this video is going to be the spindle pulley assembly. So I get a different size snap ring plier. I've got this down now. I know how to operate these damn things. So there we are. Boom. Worth every penny. All right, getting these bearings off of that pulley. So we're just going to use a, uh, a puller. This is a, a two finger puller. I don't know what they're actually called. But it comes right off. And these bearings are in good shape, but I'm going to replace them anyways. And there's your sleeve. Now this bottom bearing, if you saw my 150 video, you, you got to get some space under that bearing to get a puller in there. So I'm trying to lift up on the bearing, but it isn't having it. So I'm going to use two wrenches. If you do this, you want to be very careful not to bend the pulley. So I'm actually lifting up with the end of those wrenches more than I am pushing down. And then I'm working my way around to just lift the bearing up a little so I can get that puller under it. Once I got it, Get the puller on there. And it's kind of rough getting started, but once we get going here. You'll see I'm turning this with just one finger now. So so I think that's going to wrap up this video. We've gone long enough. The next video, we will uh, tear down the motor and the chuck. If you enjoyed this or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all the support, and I will see you next time.